Hi, this is Kim Pinkney and welcome to my channel. Alrighty, so uh, congratulations to anybody who has watched every video up to this point, um, or at least caught the synopsis of the video. Um, I'm now working on the climax, so uh, literally, I guess. <laughs> literally, literally and figuratively. Um, so I started doing more thumbnails because I'm like, I gotta get through this. I gotta freaking get through this. So uh, this is where we are so far. Uh, um, hi for anybody who has uh, not seen the other videos before this. Um, I'm working on a web comic. Uh, it's a one shot called uh, Nocturnal Emissions. It's for a contest on uh, Webtoons. And it's about a guy who um, has this job and uh, he does exceptionally well when he uh, gets a really good night's sleep, but he suffers from nightmares and, uh, you know, debilitating nightmares. And uh, most of it's all in his head, but he can't sleep. So, but he found that if he sleeps with someone else, they take on the nightmare. Usually it, it began as um, something that just was in their head and then it evolved into something more physical because every time a person's with him it kind of suppresses the nightmare and the nightmare comes out it just comes out a little stronger than each time and it kind of feeds on the person that's there um, and uh, so he's gotten to the point where he's almost desensitized to the fate of someone else so um, he found someone who could help him with his nightmare and uh, she suppressed it and but unfortunately she was um, an active duty sailor and she was on her way out um, on a cruise so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you some of the thumbnails of the climax here uh, with uh, we've already seen where what, what she's going through while the cruise is beginning um, and now I'm going to show you, it is really scratchy stuff, so I'm going to do my best to try to clean it up or explain what's going on, and then I'm going to do a few more to go ahead and uh, finish up the climax. Uh, basically, my plot point is that he has gotten to his absolute lowest point uh, in the story. The worst absolute thing could happen, and um, he's got to get to... Uh, coffee the girl who can suppress these things before it's uh, way too late so um, here we go um, all right so I opened it up with him in his office and he's contemplating what happened the night before two people disappeared whoops this thing is going too fast um, maybe I'll have to just walk it through right here um, okay so I open up in his office um, it's kind of like a bee type of thing, um, a bee theme type of uh, office building. Um, his coworker that he can't stand pops in and says, uh, "What the hell? We're late for the meeting." She's gonna say, "What the hell?" a lot in this uh, <laughs> in this climax. I mean, she already can't believe that this guy keeps stealing her clients, but that's an internal work type of thing. And he's just at the window, just like, "I don't know what the hell. I don't know. I don't freaking know." Uh, right here. Um, in this square right here uh, is a picture of him in coffee um, and uh, she says big conference room and he's like okay and he's like okay I'm on my way type of thing so with that on his mind and he didn't really get a good night's sleep and he's just really freaking bothered he's just not feeling himself so he's taking a seat right here at the head of the table because it's um, his client that he, it's her client that he stole but they are now a part of a team it's not my client and your client it's the it's the company's client type of thing so uh, now that he's gotten a promotion just got there um, you can see why people could be a little bit miffed at uh, the newbie taking over type of thing so um, yeah this dubstep is like wicked kind of like it uh, and it's scary dubstep, which is what I like. Okay, so uh, for at least for this, so there's somebody's about to give the presentation, and it's a boring presentation, but it's 
It's, it, it's exceptionally boring to a point where he's falling asleep on himself. He should have got more sleep. Um, and uh, so his uh, co-worker, the one who he stole all his clients from, uh, is to his right, right here. Oops. Every time I touch it... Okay, I gotta keep up with this thing. Okay, so... Um, client is uh, client is somewhere over in the on the other side. Here is uh, his coworker, and she's noticing that he's starting to nod off. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this little thing here, where she's he's not falling asleep. Okay, so we got that going on. Let's close that. Okay. So he's just like nudges him, hey, stay awake. And she's like hissing at him, freaking wake up. Stay with us or whatever. She's sissing something here to him. But he's kind of looking drowsy and stuff. And she's looking at him and she's pissed. Just like, this is my freaking, this, is, this would have been my client. I would have gotten that big ass office, you know, that sort of thing. She's just really freaking pissed. And he's got kind of like one eye open, one eye closing. He's just not right. And um, just as he starts to nod off, he's, he's, she sees something weird, like eyes on the side of his head. Like she's seeing the monster start to appear. She's like, hey. And she like just about elbows him. You know, uh, it's like, it's like, what the hell, you know, type of thing. She's seeing something coming out of this guy, and it's, uh, and what wakes him up is that his boss um, is like, I gotta go take a leak, I'll be right back. Um, and, he, and he's the one that wakes her up, and she's like, what did I just see, you know, type of thing. So he's kind of like, it's like, okay. <laughs> And then, uh, so the boss rolls out. He's uh, on a, in a wheelchair. I wanted to put like slave driver like right here on his wheelchair, but it is what it is. Okay, so we got that. Next one is um, he's pretending like he's looking at the papers. They're kind of talking about um, the proposal and things like that. And then all of a sudden his head just goes back. You know, he's nodding forward, but his head just goes back. Like, you know, like when you do touch and goes. And she notices that he's falling asleep. And then she happens to look down and she sees he's got a boner. She's like, does he have a boner? And people are like, what? <laughs> and they're laughing and they're like, what? Oh, he's asleep, but he's got a, he's got a heart on. And if you've, if you've caught on to any of the other parts um, that I've done, heart on equals bad thing. Um, so they're all like pointing and laughing, two of them are at least. Um, she's trying to stifle a laugh, but it's not easy. You know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, when you come across a guy, you know, uh, stole your job, well, stole your your clients, wears these ridiculous ties. Well, they're actually kind of cool. Um, but, you know, she's just been pissed off at this guy since, he's, since day one. But anyway, um, she's like what the and then uh, you know as they're like the two people are the uh, two co-workers are right here one's like wake him trying to wake him up but um something's starting to come out of his mouth and that's when the monsters start to come out and this has never happened during the day ever um and she's like oh the hell like one's coming after her. Another one is already on this one. You know, they're just all just coming out of this guy. And so, um, let me turn that one off. Okay, so he wakes up, like just maybe snores, or he hit, gets hit or scratched or something like that. And he wakes up. And he's, it's this bloody scene. It's just a nightmare just come to life. There's blood dripping from the ceiling. Um, the table's like turned over and broken. There's somebody under the table. 
um, there's somebody against the wall, just slumped, uh, and he's like, oh shit, he's like in the middle of it, um, but he's still in his chair, you know, so what happens is like when he falls asleep, everybody else gets the nightmare, and when there's nobody else to inflict it on, the nightmare comes after him. Um, whenever, uh, so there's a body on the floor, um, he gets up and he's like lifting the table, you know, trying to get to help the people that are over here. Um, and just then, you know, so he's looking at the carnage, he's, he's these, some people are like clearly dead or just pretty much injured hopefully they're not dead because if they're dead then he's really screwed but they're unconscious he's just looking at all the bodies the client is on the floor um, you know and, and it's all just uh, carnage he's like crap 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 everybody's just like puddles of blood blood on the walls um, lots of fingerprints, handprints, smears, just a, just a, just a freaking crime scene and a half. Um, so the boss that just came back from, um, taking a piss, he's like, oh my god. And he looks around and everything's bloody and he's, um, um, trying to, you know, help somebody. He's like, call 911. And so the boss, like, like hell on wheels, like here's one of the wheels here. <laughs> you know, he's like zoomed to go get help. Okay, so we'll have like a little pause here. At first I was going to put something else here. Um, but just to have like a pause, um, I leave, I'll leave like a, a little bit of that blank. So now you've got EMS, you've got the police. And uh, they've already taken his statement and they said they'll be in touch. They're taking statement, statements from... Um, the uh, boss that is in his wheelchair and then um, they're taking out the bodies of the people and uh, his co-worker that was sitting next to him the one whose job he stole uh, well job his um, you know well basically hey Ian good morning welcome to my order <laughs> um, her clients uh, she is like reaching out and grabbing his tie and she's like, you did this to me, you did this to me, or at least trying to say something like that. And um, the EMS guys are looking at her like, what the fuck? <laughs> Before she couldn't move. <laughs> and now look at her. Her arm is off and it's like, it's bleeding. It's like, <laughs> her arm fell off. <laughs> she's like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, they, they, had it, they had a tourniquet on it, but it's like, it actually is off now. Um, so they're trying to wrestle her back onto the gurney. Um, the cop, uh, or somebody's right here trying to protect old boy here. Let's see, let me turn that on. And then, um, the, uh, boss wheels up again and he's like, what was that about? And, you know, so he's in shock, everybody's in shock. And, um... That kind of leaves me at, let's see, the next part. Um, let's see, climax number two. Make sure. Okay, I haven't begun. Okay, so now I'm at the point where all that crap has gone down, um, and I need to keep going. I need to keep the story going. Now he's in shock. Um, boss um, tells him, you know, this has been. This has been some crap. Um, there we go. So I'm going to do a quick little thumbnail of the boss in a wheelchair. And he's like... And they're in a whole other room. Maybe we'll say his... Um, we'll say this is his new office. the giant windows that are like that 
his desk and he's like you need to take some time off you know this has been a, this has been something for each of us and we're going to shut down the office until you know we know what's going on got to deal with the press all that crap so um take some time off and um so our boy here is like okay and um boss rolls away takes one look back at him as he's leaving uh, and he'll say something and he's he's just like at his lowest point it's like doesn't know what the hell to do and then on his desk he sees um, you know the picture of him and his girl here I'm going to see if I can frame it and then have him kind of look at the, the picture let me see it's about like right here Just try to keep the basic shapes here. Um, lots of uh, what is it called? Um, lots of uh, stick figure type of things, and that makes it go pretty fast. Um, we'll have his we'll have his shirt kind of ripped open, his tie is still on, but kind of a mess. So he's like, this has never happened. It's like, the nightmares. Oh, you have no idea, huh? Um, I'm working on, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, take a break real quick and I'll show you what I'm working on. Um, I am working on, because been, it's been a while since I've, I've seen you here. Um, I'm working on this. It's a uh, web comic called Nocturnal Emissions. It's uh, for um, this one contest that's on Webtoons. Let me see if this will open up pretty fast since I don't have... Um, Here we go and you got to see this mess okay so I, I I read a lot of these webtoons and um, this is the site here and it's for a short story contest and I got the link in the description and um, it has to be 30 panels or um, minimum you have to have uh, in these two uh, categories either something mind-blowing or heartwarming and uh, they give some examples these this one is a really good horror series and um, I haven't read any of these because I don't intend to do one of those and I was in, I was hoping that I'd be done and uploaded by April 30th um, but it's not gonna happen so um, I think I'll be hopefully by the end of May I should be completely done but I'm trying I was trying to aim for the end of April and you know that would give me only three days to finish this entire thing um, it's a long ass story and the thing that I'm why I'm doing this is that the prize is the bomb there'll be 20 total winners 10 from heart 10 from brain um, 
let's see and then uh the grand prize winner you get fifteen thousand dollars cash prize i was like Ugh. i'm gonna go for it <laughs> i always wanted an excuse to to do a uh, a web comic and i've wanted to do you know like the 100 days of making comics and stuff but i never knew what to do with it but now it's like dog i'm gonna do this and then um it, the, it's published as an original anthology and then uh this is like the grand prize winner. It will be a uh, three to five minute animated short. And then there'll be three silver winners, 5,000 cash prize. So if I never make it up here to be animated, this would be the bomb. Um, and then just still published as an anthology. And then uh, six bronze winners, 3,000. I could dig that too, um, cash prize. And it's still published as an anthology. So I'm hoping, yo, I'm hoping. But um, the judgment criteria is like uh, narrative category specific it has attributes. So it has to have that mind bending crap, 40%. Um, pacing, readability, clarity. If it can follow your story pretty well, 30. And level of audience engagement, how many people like it? You know, how many likes does it get? That will make a, a big freaking difference. So I'm trying to do this bad boy up. Um, and then uh, they have the rules and stuff like that. But basically, it has to be between... Um, oh, I'll read that later. But um, it has to be three to five chapters. Um, and let me see if there's anything else in here. Okay, here we go. Each category requires three to five episodes and uh, 30 plus panels per episode. And um, so that is that. I, I don't think I'll have a problem with that. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I could use the money. And um, I've always wanted to, what's the word? Um, I don't know, I've always wanted to win something for my art. You know, I've won one thing for my art. Um, but I've, I've won other things for my storytelling. So, okay. Um, from the get-go, just a kind of brief synopsis, and I'm going to kind of run through it kind of quickly. Um, we have this guy who uh, can't sleep. And he is... I'm trying to find... Here's a, here we go. This guy can't sleep. Um, he's a good-looking guy. Um... And, uh, but with this, with this kind of thing, it, it just, um, makes him not such a nice person. Um, and, uh, so he's like into giving himself flowers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, putting it on his desk. He likes to wear these, um, he likes to tie his tie in a, a unique fashion, you know, and, um, he's an Asian guy, uh, very good looking and uh, he gives the little girl a flower and um, he's thinking that um, the little girl is, so, is cute but he would throw her to the devil for a good night's sleep and um, he has this disturbing thought it's like oh god that's so disturbing that's dark and then he's like too bad it's true you know you know I tried to give him a redeeming value but it's kind of hard when you're kind of out for yourself um, but yeah, so, um, some of the panels that I do have, uh, done, and it, it's, it gets pretty rough, um, let's see, let's see, seen before is pub meetup, okay, so anyway, um, he meets up with a friend of his and uh, he gives him this idea to go to an e-club because he's already burned through a shit ton of women and you know how women talk you know especially if you have a small town and everybody kind of knows each other type of thing um, so he burns through all his women he um, uh, has this meeting that he's it's super important for him to get to um, and um, and this is him at his job. Um, 
this is the chick that sits next to him. She thinks she's like, like Bill Gates or something like that, or whatever that dude's name with the, uh, of Apple, Tim Apple, ah, not, but anyway, um, and that's his boss. I kind of modeled him after, uh, you know who, um, and, uh, Basically, uh, his, he meets up with a friend of his who just joined the FBI and uh, tells him to go to an e-club. And this is like the Uber e-club. He goes to the club and uh, he takes home women and he says it's the perfect place to go. Um, because it's like there's just a constant influx of women, not like the regular bars and whatnot where, you know, you got the same faces, you got the same lounge lizards, you know, you're going to burn through those. Um, he even uh, goes uh, the route of a prostitute once. And uh, with that one, he had, uh, she was late in this particular scene, she was late. Um, and she's like, seriously, what kind of freak puts a time lock on a bedroom door? And uh, he tells her there's a mini fridge in the bathroom, like in a hotel. <laughs> what the mini fridge would be like in the, in the room itself. Uh, don't touch anything. And then uh, she lays down and he steals all the blankets because she was freaking late. No sex for you. Um, he's trying to get eight hours sleep. He needs freaking eight hours sleep in order to, you know, be strong enough to you know, go on, you know, be his awesomeness, and so she's on Lacebook talking shit about him, he rolls over, and, um, he has this boner, a boner and a half, so she decides she's going to take a selfie with it, and, let's see, I'll do this quick replay, so before I was taking, um, thumbnails, I, I found this setup on the internet, and um, decided I was going to use that to uh, do my thumbnailing. But then I realized, you know, if I just put it in the size, like five, five or ten times, as, well, not ten times, but five times the size of uh, the actual image that I'm working with, I'll, I'm able to um, uh, draw better. Because the size that you need to upload is 800 by 1280, which is not very big. It's like enough for your cell phone to look at. And um, so here's basically the story. Uh, she takes a picture, a selfie with this boner. She looks and sees something really funky on the, the selfie. So uh, she looks behind her and she sees this f massive effing head. Um, and I had some problems with the, uh, the pose uh, of the girl turning around. So I threw in an extra uh, pose. And it's funny, as I was um, doing it, I was like, Dang, so who should I have be a prostitute? Because I, I, I kind of have an actor or a model or an actress on uh, all the characters. Every single character has at least something based off of someone in real life. Like the little girl was a little girl off of Pin Pinterest, I think. Um, the, the prostitute here, I was like, who would be like, who would do this sort of thing, you know? And I'm like, ooh, a Kardashian. So I started drawing Kim Kardashian as this prostitute. You know, we have to have a cameo here. Um, the only ones I don't have as real people are uh, the montage of women that he goes through at the very beginning. I started the story off, and here's where I was improvising. Because before it started off with me um, having him tell her you can't come in unless you agree to, to be here for eight hours you know so I'd have to have bubbles after bubbles telling her to do this I'm like no bump it um, the bitch is late <laughs> which makes me uh, have him be kind of selfish about hoarding all the blankets you know it's, it's like damn it and so um, yeah that's why a, a prostitute would talk crap about him on Facebook because or Lacebook um, and then I had as a, as, oh, and I also learned something about um, this program that if you make these like the five panel thing, you zoom it in, uh, everything that you have beneath it that is not um, in the original screen here gets cut off. So all this is gone at the very bottom here. So uh, that's the only reason why this particular scene wasn't completed. And then uh, a little bit later, my daughter decided that she uh, was going to volunteer her services in, in coloring. And I'm like, cool, but, 
you know, I'm kind of on a deadline here. So um, I might end up just coloring it myself. So anyway, um, he picks up a prostitute, and this is the end of that scene. Um, let's see, and uh, she pretty much scratches her way out of the place. Let's see. This is him uh, being told by his, um, what the hell is she, his rival at work um, that, you know, they've got this hell of a meeting. And um, he's like, shit, is that during this week? And so this, these five panels here, I've condensed down to something like this. As, oh, not that one. Um, this one as cleanup. So there'll be like two scenes where um, his uh, co-worker <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'll have you as a lounge lizard <laughs> picking up a girl. No. Um, let's see. Uh, but anyway. Um, I'll, I'll throw you in there as a character. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so I have him um, working and she comes in and tells him about the client that uh, she stole. Yeah, he stole, rather. And uh, he's like, crap, I gotta get it. I gotta get it done. I gotta get, I gotta, I gotta get some. <laughs> so out of this act of desperation, you know, one of the acts of desperation, he gets a prostitute. Another one, he gets, um, he meets the girl at the uh, club. And let's see, his buddy tell, takes him to this uh, e-club. When he comes in, he sees this. And there's women every freaking where. Um, this is what his office building looks like. And he's now got like one of these type of office spaces. The big wigs are on the bigger, bigger area. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. De -de 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 -de. Anyway, and I was going to make this into like the Irish pub or something like that where they go and uh, play pool. I just need to give it a name and stuff like that and clean up my lines. It's just a mess right now. Look at that. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I was struggling with that. Um, let's see. This was him blowing through all his women. But anyway, um, his girl uh, he that he meets, this is his house, the love nest. Um, the girl that he meets has the ability to, um, and she seemed really nice. Uh, uh, he takes her home and she suppresses his nightmares. And so he keeps her <laughs> until she has to leave. And um, she's not his type. He's seen her around a lot, um, but, you know, she was never his type. So he never really approached her, but on this night, it was slow, and uh, this is where he was desperate, and he was just like, bump it, I'm just going to freaking go. If I find somebody, I find somebody. If I don't, I don't. That's before the nightmares get really super bad. Um, and uh, his nightmares, um, okay, so anyway, uh, going to the club, la 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 la, she's got to leave. He goes to the club another time, and he has this crazy, he takes on this crazy marine, or doesn't necessarily take her home. Let me see if this will do it, where we can, let's see, okay, so he, um, <laughs> see, this is his office, um, his co-worker comes into his office, tells him that this should have been her office, he's like, uh, she's telling him that here's a mountain of stuff that you need from the client you just stole and uh, that there's a meeting and uh, uh, he decides that he's gonna go to the club it's dead there's cer certain times all the ships are gone and there's nobody there so she's like and no you can't postpone it he's like 
<laughs> trying to keep from cussing, but um, there's a picture of his girlfriend. He looks at her and he goes, okay, I can do this. So he goes to the club and he uh, sees this really strong looking woman. And uh, he's like, can I buy you a drink? And she's like, no, I'm just leaving. And I'm, no, I'm leaving with you, basically. And she grabs him like by the tie. And she's like, you coming? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know you will be. Okay, so anyway, yeah, this chick kind of reminds me of me almost back in the day. I wasn't that strong, but I was just this forward um, at times. It depends on the guy. So they go to um, the his favorite uh, um, hotel, and she just rides him like he owes her money. She tells him to take a five minute head and water break. She made him earn that sleep. So she's taking a shower and she's like, who knew this guy could go for so long, you know? And then it's like, I was better than he was. You know, she hears a bang on the door and it's like, is that you? It's like, man, the man's insatiable. You know, I can't wait to hit that again. And then uh, the stuff starts coming through the door. And um, it pushes her while she's in the shower so you got the shower curtain and, it, the, and this massive hand is pushing her and so she falls back against the wall but she's a marine you know all about survival and shit so she pulls the curtain down puts it over the hand is like i gotta get to the door and you know, i can't hold this thing so she's trying to get to the door she's wet she's dripping she's soapy she says i gotta get the hell out of here um and uh the hand grabs her by the leg and it's pulling her just as she kind of like reaches the door so she's like trying to kick the leg off and trying to reach for the door and she's like what the hell is happening so she's like trying to punch it and whatever she can do to get away from this thing and so it like pulls her and it's like is that a big hand and she's like and then she looks at the shower and she sees like this big face and a tongue and stuff like that get ready to like eat her. So she's like freaking the hell out. Okay, so she's like, she kicks herself free and she's like, go, go, go. And she opens the door and she sees all these hands. Um, and then the big hand right behind her, it grabs her and it like all pushes her all back in. And it, like, the door slams. It's like every time he, uh, every time he uh, goes to sleep, he gets this, the happy dreams. It's like it's trying to keep him asleep. So he realizes that it's time to go. Um, he grabs his pants and everything. And he just runs the hell out the door. Um, so this was just more of the work on there. It's like, I better go before she goes for round two. And he whispers, bye. And then he's out the door. Um, sorry about that. It was really fast, the last bit. Um, so he, like, uh, barely even, like, he doesn't put his tie. He just goes right to work from there. And the shower's running. He's like, bye. <laughs> so he got enough sleep for the next day. Um, and then uh, he meets up with his friend again. Uh, at uh at the uh bar and they start talking and uh he after he this is all after he meets coffee coffee's doing well coffee's finally left um and she's been gone for like i want to say about two weeks and he hasn't had a nightmare so it's like this is tight this is what it feels like not to you know to have a decent night's sleep and then so he meets up with his friend. He's celebrating that he's had his, he's finally able to sleep and his friend has got promoted. His wife is pregnant. And he's like, this is wonderful. And uh, so life is good. He sees two chicks. They pick him up. They go to, um, they go to uh, a hotel and uh, they disappear. So he goes to work and uh, we're getting up to the climax. Uh, one of them uh, he finds under the bed. He found it's not, which is not uncommon. Uh, sometimes he finds girls under the bed, 
and he just tries to say, well, you were just so wild that we took it under the bed and all this stuff. You were just, a, you know, that's a good sex, you know, type of thing. Um, but this one, he couldn't bullshit. She was just muttering. It's like, it took her, it took her, it took her, it took her. And then uh, she, her eyes kind of focus on him. Um, let me see if I can find where that is. I think it was this one. Yeah, this is the one. Um, let me see. I'm going to put this all in a <laughs> cohesive, finally makes sense type of order. But a lot of this is just draw it fast, draw it fast. Okay, so he meets two girls, takes them to the, 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 the hotel, um, gets his, his uh, key card. He's a regular. And he leaves really good tips. So if he fucks up the room, he leaves a really great tip for the maid. And that's the maid right here, uh, peeping around the corner. So um, uh, these two women, they are married. Uh, they have wedding rings on. He doesn't care. Good night's sleep is a good night's sleep. Doesn't matter. He's cured, you know. Didn't expect to see him again. It's been a while. Uh, better leave a good tip. And so he's got the two chicks right next to him. Uh, he's sleeping on one of them's legs, and the other one is like uh, kind of draped over him. And a lot of what we're going to see is in the mirror. Um, so, so as he's sleeping, he starts to get a boner. She rolls over. He starts to grow. The monster starts to show. Um, and uh, there's like a hand right here hands here and they're about to just feed on these chicks here um, let's see all right so he wakes up the room is completely freaking trashed and the the thing that wakes him up is that this uh, this particular uh, picture in the back here uh, falls down he's like what was you know, and it's like this big crash. So he wakes up to that. And he's like, oh shit, there's no chicks in sight. Um, and there's blood. There's like a trail of blood. And then uh, he's like following the trail of blood. And it leads under the bed. He looks under the bed and he sees the chick and says, it took her, it took her, it took her. And he's like, are you okay? And she's like, it took her, it took her, it took her. And she looks at him and she screams. It scares the shit out of him. He falls back onto uh, the nightstand that's uh, overturned. And then he comes to and she's not there. And he looks under the bed again and it's like, did she leave? This room is like completely trashed. And he's like, shit, where'd they go? You know, and then not out the window doesn't open don't look don't and, and and usually the window doesn't open but this the the curtains are open and there's no window he's like he's like don't look just go so he's getting dressed um and this is just like a scene of him getting dressed <laughs> excuse me it was a really good night um leaves the biggest tip ever i don't think it's gonna work and then <laughs> And uh, the um, the clerk calls to him and says, uh, "We have some noise complaints, sir." He says, uh, "Yeah, that, I'm sorry, that was me." <laughs> um, that was they said they heard screaming or something like that. He's like, "Yeah, that was me." <laughs> so um, he tells them to charge them uh, triple. He says, I'm sorry, there's damage to the room, you know, two wild girls. Uh, please charge uh, charge me for the damage, and you know, of course we will. And it's like, um, we'll take care of it. I understand. I'm like, two, huh? Uh, please charge triple for the trouble. You know, he's like, yes, sir. No, uh, not a problem with that. So the scene ends with him walking um, to work. He passes the same little girl with the flowers and stuff, and he's but he's so lost in thought he doesn't even notice them. He's like, what took her? Where did they go? He's like, would you still throw the girl to the devil after this? You know, that sort of thing. Uh, so, um, and I think what would be a nice touch if um, the little girl is like, 
waving. Well, maybe not. I don't know if she'll care. But anyway, um, I don't think it, I don't think I should add that. I don't want to distract from the scene. And so he's lost in thought. Where did they go? And that's where we start to get to the climax. Um, now, uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll we'll leave the climax where it was. And he's like, I gotta get to coffee. He'll try to call her. Uh, can't reach her. She's on the ship. So, um, we'll have him hold this. Let's see. It's ring, ring. This is him and coffee. Okay, so it's ringing, 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 and you already saw what happened with the climax, which was basically um, he always tried to keep work and his private life separate. So he never fished in the company pond as far as finding a woman uh, to satisfy himself for the night. Um, he didn't want to have that kind of reputation circulate at work so he never pursued anybody uh, but now the shit has come and hit work this is this is his bread and butter this is the place that he pretty much forms his identity over you know some people um, like I'm a plumber I'm a salesman you know I'm a librarian you know and they're proud of it well he's damn good at what he does and So, I was like, shit, she's out to sea. Okay, so... Calls friend. Let's see, I'll call... I'll call Bryce. So... Okay, um, let's see, we'll put, I'll call Bryce up here. Let's see, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Okay, so I wanted to have a conversation with Bryce. Uh, that's his FBI friend. I finally gave him a name. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't have a name for him. And one of the things I, I did was go into um, SeventhSanctum.com and just picked out random names. So, oh boy, even though he is um, Asian, uh, of Asian descent, he still has whatever name that I got from off of SeventhSanctum.com, which is Derek Clay. Um, and, uh, let's see, so... Um, Let's see, we'll give him... Okay, so like... Should we remove the dreams?
think. Okay, they attacked during the day. Hey, coffee bag. Let's see, we'll have his face. Like. Okay, now here's where I'm going to be, uh, I have to figure out the actual time frame. Uh, it took us a week, it took us a week to go to San Diego, but I think we went really slow uh, from Washington to San Diego on the, on the uh, Nimitz. Um, so... Okay, so this is a lot of exposition, um, but I need him to get off his ass and go. Um, I'm going to tell, I'm gonna have his friend tell him that he's got a chance at uh, catching the ship. Okay, so here we go. Hope. There's a chance. Okay, so um, in one of my scenes, um, 
where it had like two weeks. Let me see. He had um, cleaned up. Let's see. I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah, he's picking up two chicks here. He messed up. I'm trying to figure out where it was. Okay, this is coffee. We've been playing video games. Okay, there was a part where he had, it had been, you know, she had left and he hadn't changed the sheets. And when he had changed the sheets, uh, that's when he realized that um, she had left a pair of her panties or something like that there. And with that underneath her pillow, underneath his pillow, um, Let's see. Okay, so he's got the I gotta go thing. Putting on a Okay, so, um, we'll have him put his hands on his desk. And you know, who uses a phone nowadays? People use Bluetooth, don't they? We'll have blood all over his shirt. We'll have a tie. We'll have it like kind of hang like a sailor tie. <laughs> it's all messed up. Okay, so. I gotta go, man. Okay. All right, so there we go, finally. Oh my god, I didn't think I'd ever get to this point. Okay, so that is the end of this scene. And i got time for the next. Um, okay, so... Let's see... Excellent. Alright, so that was I Need Coffee Now. This is him on his way. So, okay. Uh, because he's leaving in the middle of uh, an investigation... 
I want to say um, the police are going to be uh, keeping an eye on him. Um, let's see. Does he have time to pack? No. Nah. He'll buy clothes when he gets there. So he's going to head right to the airport. Um, let's see. I need another name for Uber. How about Scuber? some squares or whatever. And we'll have like little cars. <laughs> okay. Um, and then this would be like a thought balloon or something like that. Anyway, uh, let's see. Now the cool thing about doing that and make it smaller okay so I got that there Al's at his desk. Okay, so he's going to stop by um, his boss's office. We'll give him one of those windows. But him, he can't stand the sun, so throw blinds on it. Okay. Turn that off. Now, um, oh, it's going to get nuts. Um, and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do, oh, because it, it's, it can't be so nuts that he can't have a happy ending. I don't know, but, um, let's see. Okay, so the door was kind of open right here. So he's talking to, now this, I uh, only had that, he just uh, got to California like a bat out of hell. Um, but the cops were also on his tail. So I needed, I need to have,
Okay, so call me if you need me. Get some rest. Okay, so he leaves. And there's like two cops. Going the fuck? Let's see. So the he couldn't see the two cops over here. Okay, so we've got two cops here. Okay, so we got one cop looking this way. If it's too big, let's see. Um, I think I should tell him to keep his phone on him, too. Not that he really needs to tell him that. if you need me. Likewise and thanks. Um, okay, so where were we? Do you know where in California he's going? Uh, let's see, maybe I should tell him that way I can reduce the, the thought balloons. Um, We'll tell him he's going to San Diego. I'm heading to San Diego. Okay. Okay, try to get some rest. Um, keep your phone on you. Call me if you need me. Likewise, okay. All right. Let's see. See, we're right here. Got to set stuff up. Okay, so all right. Where were we? Okay, Mr. Crap, I forgot his name. <laughs> Al, uh, Al, fuck, I'm gonna have to find, uh, I have to go back to my notes, uh, uh, Mr., do you know where you, 
Kasi Af No. I don't think he knows. I don't know if a cop would actually say this out loud. So this will be a thought balloon. Okay. All right. Where were we? Um, let's see. Do you know where he's rabbiting? Do you know where he's going? I think I might need to have... bring that down here oh we call it boober we'll call it boober where is it um, damn it's the other one okay I'll come back to it we'll put boober in the window Now, there's no way that cops would freaking let him go with blood all over him like that. They'd probably take his shirt. They can always get that later. Now, if he left... I'm trying to think. Um... Oh, you know, he would um, often, uh, what's the word, um, since he would always go to a uh, hotel, uh, like right from the hotel to the office, he would have, he might have like a change of clothes. That's still there. Okay. I 
I would. <laughs> There's somewhere we can get laid. Let's see. Or get a good lay. I don't know. Um, let's see. Don't have a happy ending, then leave it open for more. You know, I'm wondering about that because I've got, I've got an idea for a couple endings. Um, Let's see, so we're off and running. Oh, hold up, let me see, where's my phone? I was supposed to be getting a ride, hopefully, today. One quick second, let me check my phone real quick. Oh, he responded, let's see. Yeah, my boss was really nice to give me a ride. Okay, he's gonna pick me up at 8.30, so I got time to keep going. We got time, cuz. We got time, cuz. All right. Okay. So, he's going to you see, I got another hour. Yay! I might actually be able to finish this damn thing. Okay, so. All right, so. While he is on the boober, okay. I need a, uh, I need a name for an airport, um, let's see, or what are those places that you would go for, um, a ticket, I had, they don't have TWA anymore, Southwest, Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's see. linear <laughs> or line air Excuse, excuse me Oops
Okay, and now I'll draw one of the shittiest things I've ever drawn. Cars. Trying to decide if he's on the highway. I don't know. I don't care. All right. Okay, so because um, she's on the ship and she's floating between Washington and California, uh, Washington State and California, she's having, you know, and being in the middle of the ship. Uh, uh, the ship is like completely like it's just metal you know so it blocks a lot of signals okay so there's that um, and that's it with this one then I have um, coffee on the ship so in the meantime all this is going down on him You know, I, ha I had to try to figure out a way to um, maybe give him a way out or something like that. Um, let's see, his head should be tilted more to the phone. Uh, no, 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 let's see. We'll give... Look at this. This is some primitive shit. I don't even know which way this this car is like modern modern art. But I just need it as a placeholder. I don't know. Fuck it. All right. Next. Uh, do, 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 do. It's box shape. How about that? <laughs> Okay, this is some fast freaking thumbnailing. Um, I, was, I wonder if I can merge these together. Next to all those lights. We'll give it, yeah, one hour. I want things to happen like crazy fast. Um, if these guys are together. Ooh, okay. I can merge these two, I think. There we go. Alright. Turn that off. Now, uh, I put everything on its own layer so that it would be just, um, I could keep these uh, boxes because it's a bear to. Um, redraw squares all the time uh, let's see so she's going through her ordeal um oh we're still not done with him he's got to get to the airport okay um
so by the time he person in line, the people wearing masks. <laughs> okay, so he's already gone. So he's got his ticket. We have a lot of Asian males. <laughs> we have people disembarking. There's already somebody there. People going in different directions. Okay. All right. So whatever airport scene. Okay. All right, so he's already on the plane. See, so we'll have this plane like packed full of people.
And just because he's lucky, we'll give him a fat person. <laughs> Let's see, I can't remember if my plane was three across or two across. Now, what gets me is that this is totally an act of desperation. Uh, there's like, what is he going to do when he gets there? What does it matter? Because it's like, she's still on the ship. What is he going to do? You know, it's like... So that should be a, a thought of his. And because, let's see, so we're looking out the window. We've got clouds. No, we've got clouds down here. Got his hand on the hand red, hands rest, shoulder rest rather. that kind of language. Doze off. Oh, guess I really do love you. I don't know. Men are weird. Okay. I have the other person already reclining. And then we'll have, we'll repeat this one one more time. Um, and we're going to put his ass to sleep. It's a big stressful day. Let's see. I'll put some clouds here.
and you know what comes next. Oh yeah. Kim loves drawing boners. I think that's what it comes down to. I don't think the person behind, next to him is going to notice. Well, maybe they might. Like waste of a window seat. <laughs> it's a big boner. I think it should twitch. <laughs> it's gonna be a good dream. Let's see. We'll have this person like wearing glasses. Maybe not. I don't know. See, I'm trying to decide, do I want it to be a book? I'll have it be a book, but I, I want something. Like chicken soup for assholes or something like that. Just a funny book title. So, I didn't, I had no idea I'd get to this point. So happy. Okay, so. Because after this. Uh, it's going to be some shit. Okay. Um, let see. I think these two are together. Yeah. 
so I'll merge these two. All right. Okay. So, how should I wake him up? Um, Maybe the uh, the little thingies coming down. somebody falling here. those uh, air thingies that fall down. We're gonna die! plane writes itself. Let's see, I think we won't see any Oh, these are the, like the little ghost hands that are dissipating. And usually they just disappear once he's completely awake.
if somebody's trying to come back up. <laughs> These thumbnails look terrible, but uh, we've got this heavy set guy here reaching for the little thingies up on top here. Uh, I don't know. So I have that and. Let's see, I'll turn that one off. Um, okay, couldn't figure out what that line was. Okay, so this is going to be fun trying to figure this out. Um, all right, so there's their reactions. Okay, so he's going to see, there's this crying baby. Oops. There's people panicking. We almost died. And the captain is talking. Um, let's see, in between Washington, Oregon. Okay, so I wanted a way to get the cops off of this trail. So, um, uh, so one of the ways of getting them so that when he lands in San Diego, you know, because they know they all think it's going to be this one particular plane. Well, if uh, he gets off in Oregon or somewhere in California, um, he can uh, drive the rest of the way and he'll evade the cops who will be waiting in San Diego at the San Diego airport and he won't be there. So, um, which is a nightmare in itself, but um, let's see. So, 
So I want him to excuse himself. Okay, so I want him to see what's going on in the back. So like, Let me see. so basically, you know, just see heads. people who are the lady with the baby to have those things falling. I don't want to draw a billion panels. Uh, so it's like... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to find a kid that's just like all freaking out of control. Okay, so here's the mother, the kid.
and it's kicking you. <laughs> you know, babies get. They just ain't having it. I will not be silent. I had to have it be a little girl with daddy's little monster on its shirt or something like that. Okay, so... Have the kid kick him in the head. <laughs> okay, so basically he's going to be grimacing. Okay, so that'll be that. Uh, let's see. So he's going to drive the rest of the way. And then we'll have coffee. Uh, we'll do, we'll do a big giant coffee. <laughs> And then we'll have cups of empty coffee. Yeah, uh, bump it. We'll be drinking coffee. I had to do uh, the thing where uh, he's eating like coffee grounds no does all that in the, the other seat whatever it takes to stay awake
<laughs> I'll redraw it in a second. I just need to show that he's in a car. Show. Um, need to show the car first. Uh, let's see. Whatever. We'll do the wagon wheel trail, Oregon trail, or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. I'll just need to have a sign that says he's leaving and now he's entering. And San Diego. And he needs to go to where that ship would be. So he's going to call his friend. Um, let's see. So I have to have a headset. Uh, let's see. How about... Not Al. Bryce. This is a long chapter. Um, shit. He's got to know where to go because um, there's 32nd Street, Naval Base, there's all kinds of freaking bases. Well, at least two. There's Miramar, but that's an air station. So it would have to be. North Island. You know what? He should know this. No, no, because she, maybe she wouldn't tell him about it. Um,
Okay, so his buddy was just about to tell him about the crap that went down on the ship. Uh, wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of panels. Let's see, that's three, six. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, ten, eleven. That's 33 panels so far. Oh god, my fingers hurt. <laughs> and I'm still not done! Okay, so he's gonna see if he can reach uh, coffee. Um, he doesn't think he's gonna have any luck, but he's gonna try. Now, in the meantime, um, when he was leaving, so I, I could make this where I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this because I'm going to have two different areas. I'm going to have this one right here that's going to pop up, and um, she's going through some crap on the ship. So, um, I decided uh, I, Top Gun is what brought me into the Navy in the first place. So um, it'll, it was only fitting to make, um, oh shit, it's almost time for me to go, uh, to make uh, Maverick the captain. And, uh, and I made uh, Iceman his uh, XO. So uh, the Skipper and the XO uh, are Maverick and Iceman. And uh, Maverick is called... Um, a meeting they're on their way to go pick up the air wing in San Diego and he's not a happy camper um, he is telling everybody that something has happened some of you won't be with us by the time we uh, dock in San Diego or leave San Diego with the air wing he says that the condom cookie jar has been compromised and um, C is for condoms, take all you need, use all you take, and uh, you just fit your hand inside Cookie Monster and you get your condom, your condom cookie. And uh, all the condoms have a hole in them, he found out. So uh, that is not a good thing. Uh, a lot of people are scared, um, paranoid, with good reason. Uh, some of them depend heavily on those condoms uh, just to keep themselves safe. And uh, our girl, for one, she would use those condoms with oh boy. And so now she's kind of scared. Her friend is like, thank goodness I got that one shot. She's like, I got to go to medical. So basically he told him uh, that everybody's got it. Anybody who is sexually active and use these condoms needs to go get tested for an STD. They need to go get tested. Um, for pregnancy, um, go to medical. So basically, uh, they're getting another health check uh, at medical. And uh, by this time here, she's already got the news. Uh, I want to put it like a few hours later, she's already got the news. And her dream of going to uh, Japan has just been squashed. Okay, so um, and uh, she says, I gotta let him know. He doesn't know. Um, and I don't know if he'd even care. Uh, and so there's a whole long line to go use the pay phones on the on the ship. And it's guys who have some news to tell their wives who probably didn't want to get pregnant either before uh, while the, their husbands were away or boyfriends were away or whatever the situation is. So you've got all these people in line and for hours that uh, and then when Coffee, Coffee's like, I don't think he knows. He, he doesn't know. How could he know? So it's, her friend is like, um, she's trying to comfort her and saying that I couldn't get through. So uh, because he was on the plane, she couldn't get through. And when she was on the ship, he couldn't get through. So, because um, their phone's not working on the ship. So, um, they're about to dock into San Diego, and that's when we're going to have them hopefully meet up. 
All right, you guys, I got to get ready for work. My ride is a coming and I will see you guys on the morrow. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, um, I am still working on my webcomic. Um, just hit the climax and now um, definitely have to um, see this through. He's got to figure out a way to stop these nightmares. And the only way he can think of doing it is by um, finding coffee. Getting something from coffee that's her, that has her scent on it, to take back with him or whatever. But in the meantime, um, he's dodging the cops. The cops are probably thinking that he's in San Diego, but he's not. Um, he had to uh, end up driving to... Um, he had, had to end up driving to San Diego. So, um, his nightmares, which were at one time gentle with him, are now turning on him. And they're putting him to sleep at weird times. So it's a miracle that he made it to um, San Diego when he did. So, all right. We still have a whole nother scene to go. We, we gotta meet up with the girl. And then we got to get to the end. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, thumbnail it all the way to the end. And I will see you guys on the morrow. Take care and thank you so much for joining me. Ian, thanks for popping in and saying hi. I truly appreciate it. And um, if you guys want to catch the ending, you know, um, uh, like and subscribe. Pop on in. Say hi. Uh, if you have any ideas, um, you can always pop in if you want to be one of the other people that I need to design, like the cops and, you know, just random people walking by. Go ahead and uh, send me a, you know, send me in, you know, send me an invite or talk to me and we'll see if we can work make that happen. Um, these are all just thumbnails right now until I can get them to this point right here. Yeah, at this point, I'll probably end up calling this myself instead of waiting on my daughter. Um... I don't know what her status is right now, but um, hopefully uh, we can get through this together. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.